Hey guys, it's Casey and welcome back for another Unreal tutorial. Today we are going to be doing a short tutorial on a barricade system that I'm using in one of my upcoming games. So I just kind of had a need in my game to where if like if I search for a door frame here, I believe we have one, here we go. So with this door frame, I basically had the need for my game to where I wanted the player to be able to walk up where a doorway was and that they could hold a button and that while they're holding this button, it would start constructing a barricade around the door frame and that then when enemies came to that door frame, they would damage it and it would accumulate damage and it would piece by piece start to destroy till eventually it was gone and then the enemies could come through. So I'm going to go over kind of the basics of how I set up that system. So the first thing that I guess we should go over is that this is just the default first person template. And the other thing is, is that you wanna go into your plugins because I'm going to be using a little bit of destructibles here. You don't necessarily need this if you don't want to, but enable the Apex Destruction plugin if you want to be able to use the destructible, uh, just destructible meshes, and then you have to restart after you uh, enable that. So what we're gonna do is simply we just really want to create a new actor and I want this new actor to be um, a blueprint class so I'm just going to right click inside of our content folder and I'm going to add a new blueprint class and I just want it to be of the class of actor I just want it to be existent in the world we don't need to worry about any of the possession or anything like that and I'm just going to call this barricade BP and then I guess we should back up. Let me check the um, the project settings. I think we need to add some inputs. It's probably good to just do that now. So under edit I'm going to go under project settings and then let's go under inputs and let's see I believe we should have one for like left clicking so yeah we have one for fire I guess I'm just gonna add one more and I'm gonna make it on right click so if we search for right I think it's right mouse is what we're looking for there we go right mouse and I'm just gonna call it um, let's just call it construct I guess that works for me so we're gonna have our left click and we have our right click and I think that will work just fine so I'm gonna save so now let's go inside of our barricade blueprint so what I want to do is I want to do, let's do like three boards across this so that a fully constructed barricade would have three boards kind of sitting horizontal across this door frame. So let's go inside of our barricade. And now what I want to do in the top left is I just want to add three components to it. So I want these to be cubes and I'm just going to scale them to kind of match how we need it to look on the door frame. So I'm actually going to kind of, let's see if we can move this out of the way just a little bit. I have two monitors, but I don't want to do this off screen for you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of manipulate this cube inside of the blueprint down here so that it matches up over here. So let's see. So I want to scale that, I think, in the, okay, no, I want the Y so we can make it thinner. Let's see. We need it to be about like a fourth of that maybe. So let's do like 0.1 here on the Y. Okay, let's do like 0.07 or something. That should be better. And then we want our X to be a little bit wider. So let's scale that up there. That probably looks good. And then let's scale our Z down mm, a little bit smaller than that. Let's do like 0.2. Let's do like 0.15. That looks about like a board to me. Okay, so I think that looks about right. So let's see if we can position this in the door frame and see if it's big enough for us. That looks about right. So let me snap that a little bit like that. So does that look good as a board? I think that can look okay. Maybe we should make that just a little bit longer. I believe that was in the X. There we go. So that looks good to me. So now what I want to do is inside of this, let's add two more of these so that we have three boards in total. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy paste onto the uh, onto the root here. And I'm just going to do that two times. So now we should have three boards. And now I'm just going to put the third board the highest. And I'm going to put the second board in the middle and have the first board be down at the bottom. So let's see how that looks. If we do that, so let's move down our actor just a little bit. So that looks about good. So we can make this look a little bit cooler even. Uh, I hate this VR plugin. Let's close that. Um, so I'm going to rotate these boards just a little bit to make them kind of cool, to make it so it's not just so uh, static. So let's do that. And then how about we just do something like that, and then maybe we rotate that one. Or, mm, let's see. How about, yeah, let's just raise that up just slightly. So I think that could look good. So let's look see how that looks in the door. Okay, that's actually the rotation on that is a little bit too much. Let's rotate that back just a little. How about that? Let's do that. And then what do we have the rotation here? Like 10 degrees? Let's do like 7 or something like that. That could be a little bit smoother. So let's see. Okay, that looks pretty good. So in a perfect world, we would have these textured like wood which is okay. We don't need that to be so right now, but that's going to be kind of our end goal is what we're looking for at the end after we construct our barricade is this is what we want it to look like. We have kind of our boards blocking the doorway and kind of now we need to kind of work backwards. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm actually going to, by default, I'm going to set these three boards to not be visible. So on the top left here, I'm just going to select all three of my boards, and then on the right here, I'm going to set them to not be visible. So now these boards are technically invisible. Along with them being invisible, I want them to start with no collision. So let's see here. I believe we just want to set this to be no collision, and I think that works for me. Or actually, hmm, do we want to do it like that? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, I think we can, we might need to change that in a little bit. I can't remember exactly if we want to start with no collision like that, but we'll see in a minute. I think we might want to do that slightly differently, but I think that can be okay for now. So let's do that. So now what we technically have is we have kind of an empty, invisible actor that has no collision and nothing that's visible. And that's okay because what we want to do is we want to construct one board at a time and we're going to pop them in place. But kind of, we have an issue here and that as a player, when I walk up to this, I now need to somehow get a reference to this barricade. So what I want to do is I want to be able to right click and I want to do a line trace from my gun to where I'm aiming and we're going to check, hey, is there a barricade in front of us? If there's a barricade in front of us, then we're going to start building. But because we're kind of using some invisible stuff, it's hard to get, it's hard to get a reference to this barricade. So one solution that I used in my game is we're actually going to use a completely kind of huge invisible cube that is going to act as our as our collision to, to check for to see if we're actually hitting the barricade. So what I want to do is a little bit like the uh, a little bit like the um, the boards we used. I want to scale this. So I think do we bring the X in? No, we bring the Y in. So I want to make it. I don't need it to be very big at all. That's fine. I need it just just be the width of the doorway. Or actually, that can work. I think that's about right. Maybe we just do that just one. And now I need to scale this to be the size of the door. So remember, my boards are in place of how I want them. So I don't want to move this blueprint in the world. What I want to do is I just want to move this cube in the world. And I just need to size this now to the door frame. So let's do that. I think that could be good. Maybe we drag that down just a little bit. So there we go. So now this thing kind of fills our door. That's, that's kind of like the purpose of this is we just want it to fill the door. I'm going to move it back just a little bit so it kind of fills both sides. That looks about right to me. And now what we want to do is we want to set this to not be visible. Let's see here. So where's our visibility? So we want this to be invisible, but we don't want to turn off collision on this. We want to do some custom collision. We want to ignore everything except our visibility trace. We want to block our visibility trace because, or actually, do we want to overlap it? We'll try block at first. We might change that to overlap later. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to do a line trace to try and find this invisible blocking cube that we just did there to let us know when we are actually hitting a barricade with our line trace from our player. That was the purpose of that big chunk we put in there. The only purpose of that is is for us to hit it with the line trace. So now if we go inside of our character here, our first person character, I'm just going to click it in the world to edit blueprint and open the blueprint. What I now want to do is I want to be able to do a line trace from our player when we click to try and see if we hit that barricade. So we made an event or I made an event and I believe I called it construct. See, there we go. Maybe construct wasn't the right name for it because there's a lot of things that kind of use the word construct, but that's what I named it. Um, so what we want to do is when I press right click, what I want to do is I want to do a line trace by channel and let's do it on the channel of visibility because if you remember this blocking cube that we made on the bottom here, we made it ignore everything except the visibility. So that's what we're going to be tracing on is visibility. And now I'm going to do a tiny bit of vector math. I'm going to get my actor location. That's going to be our starting point for our trace. And then our ending point is going to be our actor's forward vector. And we want to multiply this forward vector by a distance. And that distance is going to be a float. Let's do it, let's do it like 150 units. We could make that longer. If you want this trace to be shorter, so you have to be closer to the door um, or farther, or you allow the player to be farther away to barricade, that's what this float is right here. This is how far away from our player are we doing this trace? That's what that float represents. And that we just need to add this back into our actor's location, and that's our endpoint. If you don't understand this math, I did a video on vector math, and I explain it there. It's pretty simple. Um, forward vectors are a length of one, so when we multiply it by a float, it makes that an exact distance of, in this case, 150. And since it's relative, we need to just add that back into what we're relative to, and that's our player. So that makes that line trace work. We're doing it on visibility. That works for me. Let's do a debug and let's make it persistent so that we can see our line traces. And that off of our hit, we want to do a branch. Almost always do branches off of your traces. And if we do hit something, so off of true, we want to check what did we hit. 
And what we can do is we can break our hit result, and with our hit result, we get a hit after. We want to see if we did hit something with our line trace, did we hit our barricade? And how do we check if we hit our barricade? Well, we just cast to it. So we're saying, hey, this actor that we hit, are you of the class barricade? Or are you of the actor class barricade? If it is, then we're going to have this top white pin execute for us. So now this code sets up for us so that we know when we hit a barricade with our right click. So what I'm going to do is now inside of our barricade, let's write our like our construction code basically. So let's keep it simple. I don't think I want to go as complex as what I made it for my game. I think we're just going to keep it simple so that we can just press right click and we can pop it up. So let's do that. So let's make a custom event and let's call it um, build barricade. And what we want to do is the first thing we want to do is let's make a variable. What we want to check is we want to see how many boards do we actually have constructed right now inside of that doorway. Because we want to be able to build our, our, our barricade one board at a time. If the player just wants to build one or they want to build all three, we'll leave that up to them. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this like boards, um, I guess we'll call it boards visible. You can think of this as how many boards are actually alive in the world. How many, how many of them do we actually have popped up? So by default, we're going to have that as zero because our um, our barricade isn't constructed at the start. So when we actually build, what we want to do is we want to check, <clears throat> is this equal to three? Because if this is equal to three, then we already maxed out our barricades, right? We only have three boards in this barricade. So if we already have three boards, we don't want to do anything. So if we aren't, if our boards aren't three, what we want to do is we want to take what we currently have. We want to take our boards and let's actually increment it. So let's start with that. That'll probably be a good start. Incrementing, if I hit plus plus off of our variable, we get this little macro called increment integer. And all this does is it adds one to its current value and it sets it. It's just a nice way of doing that. So if you think about this, when we start, this is by default going to be zero. And when we go to build our first barricade, we're gonna check, are there three boards? And we're gonna say, no, it's at zero. So what we were gonna do is we're gonna add one board to it. So this value is now gonna be one. And now what we wanna do is we wanna take our three boards here. So let's actually look. So I should have probably laid this out in the first place, but let's look here. So let's see, that's up there, and that is all the way up there. So if I set these to be visible again, I guess we'll just do that for our purposes real quick. We wanna build from the bottom up. So I'm gonna select this bottom board, and I'm gonna call it board one. And then I'm gonna select the middle board. I'm gonna rename it, and I'm gonna name it board two. And I'm gonna take the top board, and I'm gonna name it board three. So it's just gonna make it a little cleaner on us. And now I'm just gonna set these back to not be visible because we don't want that, so there we go. And then back in our event graph, what I wanna do is I want to set whichever board we need to be visible now that we're constructing it. So what we wanna do is we wanna actually do a select. So if I just take like one of our boards here and I do set visibility, what we wanna do is we wanna set the vis visibility to be true, but we need to figure out which board are we actually setting visible. So what I want to do is off of this target, if we unhook the pin so it doesn't know who we're actually setting visible, what I want to do with this is I want to type in select. And we get this kind of, th this fork is, is what this kind of acts like. And you can see here, we get some options. Since we have three boards, this only starts with two options. I want to right click it and do add option pin. So now what it says is we can have three options here. And what I want to do is I actually want to, um, to punch in our boards here. I'm going to move that to the right. And I want to punch in my boards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put board one at zero. I'm going to take board two and I'm going to put it on one. And I'm going to take board, I actually mistaken. I didn't rename that third board. Did I forget to set that to three? I forgot to type three. Let's rename that. There we go. Now it's set to three. And I'm going to take board three and I'm going to put it into option two. And I actually kind of, the weird thing is, is we want to take the value of our boards visible and we want to punch that in here. So we're basically saying if our value is zero, we're going to grab option zero. If our value is one, we're grabbing option one. So I'm, I think we're actually just going to subtract one off of this. There's a few different things we could do because when this is set to one, we want to grab board one. So what we could do is we could have added an option pin and just had nothing plugged into zero and just do one, two, and three. Um, we could increment after we set the visibility if we wanted to, or we could just subtract one from it. They're all valid options. I think because I started with incrementing, I'm just gonna do this minus one for you guys so I don't kinda go back and forth on the code. So what happens here is when we go to build, we're gonna check to make sure we're not maxed out on boards. And when we aren't maxed out on boards, we're gonna increment the amount of boards that we have visible. And that we're gonna use that to then select which board we need to set visible. And we're gonna select it from this select option here and that we're then gonna set its visibility. 
So what we can do is I think we can actually test this out. So let's go into our first person character and remember our custom event, I named it Build Barricade. So over in our first person character where we did our line trace, when we casted to this barricade, so when we did our line trace, when we right click, I checked to see did we hit a barricade actor. If we did hit a barricade actor, what we can do is we can exec execute off this top pin, but what we actually get also is we get this blue pin here and it's going to be of a barricade blueprint object reference. So what we can do then is we can call that custom event and what did I call it? I called it build barricade. So off this blue pin, I can type build barricade. And you can see here, it fills it in for us. So now when we right click, we do a line trace, we hit an actor and it is a barricade, we can call that custom event. So let's try that out. What, what it should happen is we should be able to one by one build our board. So if I right click, let's see if I get closer, there we go. You can see we build board one. I could like aim up in the corner here. We build board two, I can aim down at the bottom there and we build board three. And if I click a bunch, you see we don't get anything extra. So th that's a nice basis here. And if we kind of restart this, let's see. Do I fit through this door? Yes, I actually do fit through this door. So you can see before we build barricades, we can walk through this like normal. We don't have an issue in that when we build, our boards pop up, but you can see we can actually still walk through the boards. The reason is, is that we need to enable their collision one by one when we build them. So if we go back inside of our barricade, not only do we need to set the visibility of the board, but we also need to set its collision. So we can reuse this select here, and with this select, we need to set collision, hmm, what, what do we need to call it? We need to call it, let's, it's, hmm, let's see here. Off the top of my head, it's a scene component, and we need to do sets, it's not in my mind right now. We need to set collision, I thought it was set collision, let's see here. If we grab the board specifically, yeah, so we need to, hmm, there we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is off of the board, I'm going to type set collision enabled, and then I'm going to punch that over here on the right, but then what we need to do is we actually need to redo this select, I believe. Yeah, because this wants a scene component object reference, this wants a primitive component object reference. So they're two different things, so we actually need to redo our select for our collision, and as we did before, we're just going to add the options. I'm gonna, this is a little sloppy here, and we're gonna copy paste over our boards, so we're gonna punch them in, and we're just gonna redo our math there, and we're gonna take that minus one and plug it in over here. And now we're gonna set collision enabled. I believe this is actually not going to work. I believe there is going to be one issue with this. Because I believe we need to change our collision preset, and this is what I was concerned about. So if we right click and we build, let's see, can we walk through? No, we actually cannot. Did it actually work? Let's see. It looks like it's working. So I believe that that actually is working just fine. So let's try it again. So when I go to walk through it, we can walk through it just fine. But then when I go up and I build our barricade, we can't walk through it. So that works for me. Let's check our collision real quick. So if I hit eject under show, I'm gonna enable collision right here. Let's see. So yeah, that board has collision there. So what was happening is we were walking into it, and I believe what's happening here, I think our sphere, yeah. So the reason why it, it looks like we're so far away is just because our first person character has a huge collision sphere here. That's why it's just blocking us from so far away. But that works for me, I, I like that. So I'm gonna turn off that collision. So that works just fine. I thought we maybe had to do something slightly different. So now when we build a board, we're gonna set that board's visibility to be true, and we're gonna enable its collision. So now what, what we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite of constructing the boards. Let's now destroy the boards. So what we're going to do is inside of my first person character, I'm basically going to just redo this right click code with our left click and we're just going to do the opposite. We're just going to damage it. Instead of, say you wanted this to work slightly different and you didn't want to do a line trace, I'll show you how in the end, or I'll explain it at least, how we would do the same thing but deconstructing. So I'm actually just going to copy paste this line trace here. We could potentially reuse this code in a way, if we could think of a fancy way of doing a function here, but I'm just going to copy paste it for our purposes. Um, like I said, I don't think you're going to be doing this the same way, you're not going to have your character left click line tracing to destroy it, so I'm not too worried about copy pasting this code in this situation, it's just for example, so just know that. So we're going to redo our code, but this time with left click. And if we hit a barricade, what we want to do is we want to make a new custom event, and we're going to call it destroy barricade. And now what we can do is back in our first person character, off of our trace like we did above to build, we're now just going to do destroy. Or not destroy actor, don't do, do, don't do that. We want to do destroy barricade, there we go. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to call that custom event over in our barricade. So if you ever have this happen, basically what I did is I added a custom event inside of our barricade blueprint. Then I over, then went over to a different blueprint, a different actor, and I tried to call that event. You can see here we get a warning. The reason being is I forgot to compile after I made that custom event. So if I compile and then I come back over here and I recompile our first person character, you can see that warning goes away. So don't worry about that warning. If you ever have that happen when you make a new variable or you make a new event and you get an error like that, just make sure you go and you compile where you made that variable or that custom event and then come back to this other actor and then compile there and that error should solve itself. So now we're calling that event destroy barricade. So now what we want to do is we want to basically do the same code but backwards. So what we can do is we can check to see um, is our boards visible? Now we want to check, do we have a board visible? So is our boards visible equal to zero? So we're basically asking, do we have any barricades built? If this is equal to zero, we don't want to destroy anything. So like we did above, we want to do false. And what we can do is we can decrement our int. So we can do minus minus, and this is the opposite of the incrementing. So we're going to subtract one from our variable and then set it. And what we want to do is we want to pretty much redo kind of this, but backwards. So what we can do is we can copy paste this code. So we could reuse this. Hmm. Let's see. Do we want to reuse this code? Let's see here. <laughs> no, I think we'll just copy paste it. If we wanted to, we could function this and we could pass into our function like a Boolean to like do or undo the visibility and that we could feed in an enum. But I, I think I'm just going to add complexity. I'm afraid of just confusing you guys. So for illustration purposes, I'm just going to copy paste this down. And remember, what we did above is we had an issue where when we incremented our int, so say when we were building board one, we needed to grab option zero. So we were subtracting one. But now think about if we had one board. So imagine we had one board. So our board's visible as one. We come up and we do destroy. Well, what we're doing is we're subtracting one from it and setting it. So now with that one board, it's set to zero. So now we can just straight up use our boards visible and plug in the indexes. We don't have to do any subtraction because it already is at option zero with board one. So I like that. So now what we can do is we can undo the visibility and that we can do no collision. So now when we left, so when we right click, we can build. And now when we left click, we call this event and we're basically just doing the exact opposite that we did above. We're turning off the visibility of that board and then we're undoing its collision. So now what we could do is we could walk up. I could right click three times. We could build three boards and now I could then left click and then we can undo the three boards and now I can walk through. So that's like a really simplistic way of doing it and it's not very interesting. What we can do is we can use the apex destruction system and we can actually do some cool stuff. So what I want to do is I want to create a cube and I want to move it into the world. So let's do this. Let's do basic. Let's grab a cube. Actually, can we just search for it? I believe, is it hard to find the cube? No, here we go. So we can find the cube. So let's use this cube. And what I want to do is I'm just going to right click it and I'm going to create a destructible mesh off of this cube. And what I want to do is this cube is going to be in a weird location. So I'm just going to take this destructible cube that I made here and I'm just going to drag this over to my content folder and I'm just going to do move here so that I can get rid of that filter and we can see our destructible cube here. So with this destructible cube, I just want to pull it up and let's hit fracture and let's see what it looks like. So to me, that's a bit too many fractures. I'm just going to change our fractures down here under the vor, vor onoi. <laughs> that's a weird word to say. Let's just make it like four and let's hit fracture. Mm, let's try like three, maybe three will be a bit better. I don't want much, much destruction with this. Even just one maybe is okay with me. Actually, I think it needs to be two, sorry. Even two would be just fine. So I don't like that being on the bottom. Let's see if we can get that to be straight through the middle. I think we can increase the seed. And is that good? Let's see, what happens if we do two? Let's see, that, nope, how about three? I'm just kind of looking for one. I'm trying to see if we can get one that's top down. There we go, that's not bad. Mm, it's sliced through. Let's try five and then if five's not good, we'll go back to four. So no, let's just go back to four. So I like four, four works for me. I was, if we wanted to, we could try and find one that's more up and down. I forget if we get more, hmm, I can't remember if we get more control over this. I can't remember exactly, but that's just basically what I want to do. And I don't think I want to set any of these for now, any of these options for now. I'm not, I've only used this destruction system so much. I recommend looking it up. But one of the things we could do is I believe if you want to make this stuff time out, you want to enable debris, you want to enable debris timeout, and then this lifetime settings, you can make it so that our, our boards on the ground after we destroy it would disappear over time. But I'm not too worried about that right now. I don't want to really get too much into that destruction system. 
So what we want to do is essentially when we destroy a board, so if I build this board, when I destroy it, our goal is going to be well, we're going to make the mesh disappear, that static mesh of that board, we're going to make that disappear. In the moment we make that disappear, we're going to replace it with a destructible mesh and we're going to shatter the destructible mesh. And if we do it properly, the player will never notice anything. They will never see that we did like a little switcheroo on them. So that's basically what I want to achieve here. So inside of our barricade, what I want to do is off of the destroying of the barricade, what I want to do here is I want to create a destructible mesh. So I believe it is, let's see here. If we take destructible, add destructible mesh component, that's what we want to do there. And now what we want to do is we want to give it a transform. So this is a location and a scale and a rotation. And what we want to do is we, I just personally want to grab, I believe we just want the transform. Is this a one meter cube? I believe this is a one meter cube. I believe that's what that stands for. So I believe our barricade cube and our destructible cube is the same. They're the same from the standpoint that they're the same preset size. So what I want to do is actually, I want to get the transform here. We're just going to copy paste over the transform from our boards here. So off of this board, I believe we can do get transform. And let's see, is this a relative? It is a relative transform. So when I do get transform, be careful not to get the world transform. We don't want the world transform, we want the relative transform. That's what we want here because you can see here, we're adding a relative transformation on our component. And if you don't know what the transformation is, it's gonna be a location, a rotation, and a scale. That's everything we need. Because remember, we scaled our boards a little bit awkwardly and that we rotated them and our boards, like our board number two, it has a custom location that's higher than the, uh, than the origin. So that's everything we need. We're gonna feed in our location, our rotation, and our scale from our boards into that destructible component. After we add our destructible component, we need to set our destructible mesh. So with that put in off the right side of it, we need to set the destructible mesh. And our destructible mesh is just going to be that one meter cube that we made. And now what we want to do is right after we spawn it, what we want to do is we want to apply some damage to it. And hopefully, if this is working just fine, we are going to shatter it inst instantly. So I believe we need to use radius damage. I believe there is an issue right now with the apply damage. I can't remember. So if we apply radius damage, I'm just going to make the base damage like 100. The origin, for now, I'm just going to get the actor location, like the center origin of where our, um, our barricade actor is. So like that is going to be the origin right there. That's fine for me from now. Later, if you wanted to make it so like you bust it from one side or the other, you could customize this and you could feed in like the actor location of whoever's damaging it. The damage radius, I'm just going to pump it up to be like 400. That's not too big of a deal. Impulse strength, we'll set this to be like 50 or something. We'll, we'll customize these values if we need to. We, what we're really just looking for is we're just looking for this to break for now. But that's what we're really looking for. So let's see if this works. So what's happening here is that when we destroy the barricade, we're setting the static mesh board to be invisible and we're turning off its collision. And then right in its place, we're adding a destructible board and that we're going to shatter it. So let's see if this works. Hopefully this works. If it doesn't work, we might have to do some debugging. So now when I left click, hmm, so it kind of works, but it kind of doesn't work. Did it shatter? It looks like it broke. I think that board is cut in two. So what I actually want to do is, hmm, I think I'm going to look, we're going to try a few more seeds because I believe the seeds might be a little weird here. Let's see. If we could get one that was a little bit like just like cut straight through the center, I would like it so much more. So let's try 10. Let's fracture. We're just not getting any good, uh, any good fractures here. Let's try a few more. There we go. I think, nope, once again, I just want it to cut straight through there. That's, a, that's really annoying that we're not getting one that uh, really works for us. Just punching in random numbers at this point. Yeah, so that's being a little bit annoying. So let's see. Let's try this again. Let's see if we can really see it. So there we go. So, so it is fracturing, but you can see it's dropping straight to the ground. You can see, though, it is shattered in two. And I guess maybe for our purposes, when I think of a board breaking, I just think about it snapping in half. I, I'm not sure. Does this angle... Does that change that? I don't think it does. I don't think if we, no, it doesn't seem to do it. So I'm just gonna end up changing up the uh, the fracture count. I'm just gonna make it like six, just so that we really shatter it, so that we can really visually see it. I couldn't seem to find a seed that had the uh, a good snap, but you can see there, we could build the boards and that we can break them. It, there, and then we'll, we'll fix that issue in a second, but <laughs> that was wonky. But you can see we can build it, we can shatter it, but it falls to the ground. 
So what we want to do is we want that to spread out a bit farther. I want that to snap a little bit better. So let's actually increase the impulse strength and let's just increase it like 400 maybe. And let's see, does that give us some motion on that? Let's see if we right click. There we go. So that's a little bit better. So I'm not going to really fool around with it too much. I really recommend you customize that. You get a lot of control with this uh, with this radius damage here, with the damage, the radius and everything and the origin. That will all affect how your boards break. Um, if you wanted to, what we could do is that we could feed an actor um, input from our destroy barricade. So we could add a new parameter here. I could make this an, a reference to an actor object reference. And we're just going to call this like our damage dealer. And that what we could do is that we could use this input and we could get the actor location. Actually, we could just plug it in there. And what we could do is we could get the actor location um, of our damage dealer and that that could be the origin of the impulse. So if, if we hook this up properly, so if I go over to my first person character, you can see we get this damage dealer input and I can reference self because our, third, our first person character is an actor. And now I believe our boards should bust through the doorway. Yeah, you can see they try to at least. You can see how it tries to bust through the doorway a little bit, um, but our doorway is kind of blocking it. So there's one issue that I want to fix here, and that is our, we have collision on these boards. And that gets really awkward because I can't walk through this doorway, and you can see how the boards start behaving really weird. And on top of that, like if I shatter it a bit, a bunch, like this is, you can't really feel it, but it's really glitchy. It's pushing my character around. Right before, like a minute ago, it, um, it actually like flung my character up in the sky. So what we want to do is we want to turn off the collision on those boards, or at least we want them to ignore our character. I believe by default our character is going to be of collision pawn. So I think, I think, I think, if we take our destructible reference here and we set, set its collision um, re response to channel, let's do that here. Let's do the channel pawn. Let's have it ignore and let's see if we can walk through that doorway just fine. We might need to add like one more response channel there. But if I smash it, I think I can walk through just fine. And I don't think it's, nope, that glitched us. So I think it's glitching us because not only do we have pawn collision our, on our character, but our mesh. Our mesh here is going to, hmm, would that be it? Because our mesh is a little bit different. Hmm, what, well, what, it is a character mesh. So let's actually set that collision also. So off our destructible pawn, I'm going to set collision response to channel. And I'm going to do a channel, hmm, we don't get that. Let's see here. What could we do? What could we do? What could we do? Hmm, so it's of character mesh. That No, that is of object type pawn. So I wonder why are we still colliding with it? Everything seems to be of, of pawn. I'm not too sure why we're actually getting collision there. Let's try it again. Let's make sure we are getting collision. So if I build the three boards and I destroy them all down, yeah, it's not letting me walk through. So we are getting an issue with that. Let's see, it's pawn, visibility, camera. Is it our cameras blocking? Our camera shouldn't have collision like that, though. So I'm a little bit curious. I think as a simple fix for now, I'm not quite sure while we're doing that. We're just going to set the collision channel response to, let's see, all channels. And I'm just going to set it to ignore. I'm not too sure why it, it's interacting with our player like that. It really shouldn't be. Um, I, I'm confused exactly. No, we're still getting that. Hmm. Let's see. So we're taking our destructible component and we're setting its collision response to all channels, and we're having it ignore all channels, but we're still getting collision. Let's see, if I type in collision, hmm, maybe we should just turn off collision on it. Maybe that would fix it. I, it's not a good solution. I'm wondering why that's not working properly. We're getting some type of interaction there that I'm not quite understanding. In my game, I have my boards fall to the ground, they sit on the ground, but you can walk through them, and that, wow, so, am I doing it too fast? Let's see. If we just do one board, nope, that's still blocking us. I'm not too sure why. So one thing we could do is I believe with our destructible component here, I believe we can set chunk. I believe, yes. So let's try that. This is an alternative solution. Let's try this. I think this might work. So a chunk is something that's considered to have, I believe, collision inside of a destructible component. So like we fractured this into six chunks. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the threshold of what a chunk should be and I'm just going to set it to be a huge number and that'll make it so that nothing actually gets classified as a chunk because when it breaks it's going to say like hey this little piece here are you a chunk that little piece there are you a chunk we're setting the threshold to be so high 
I believe it's just going to say nothing is technically a chunk in that now, yet we can walk through it just fine. And we can see our shattered pieces are on the ground just fine. So I believe this is some good basic functionality for you guys. We can build and then we can destroy them and you can see they fall to the ground. You can see they get some weird interactions with each other. Honestly, what I would probably do is I would set these chunks back down to be two just because I think it looks so much better. Like if you could get it to snap straight in half, I'm just not getting a good seed for my destruction. But you can see there that we could destroy it. So what I said before about like you probably don't want to be destroying it from your player off of a line trace on left click. You could do this say with like AI and with AI, you could have it be checking to see when it's hitting a barricade. You could be doing a line trace in front of your AI. You could have this be done on bullets so that if you shoot the barricade, you can do a check to see what you hit with the bullet. And you do the same thing here with your hit result from your bullet. You would get a head actor. You can cast it. You can destroy the barricade. If we wanted to, we could add health to our barricades. So like we could add like board HP here. And what we could do is we can make another variable and we could call it like board max HP. And that we could set like the max HP of a board to be like five. And that since we only were to destroy one board at a time, what we could technically do with our destroy barricade is we could check to see here before we remove the barricade, we could get the health of the current board. That's what this would represent. And that what we could do is we could decrement it or we could like subtract off of it by the damage. And that what we could check is after we lower the board HP by one, what we could do is we could check to see, hey, is this equal to zero? If that is equal to zero, then let's go ahead and start destroying. But if it's not equal to zero, then we don't want to destroy it just yet. And then the other thing that we want, wanted to do is that when we build a new board, we just want to reset the board HP back to be the max HP. So when we build a board, it's going to set the board HP to be five. And that when we damage the board, we're going to damage it one by one. And that finally, when we hit it to zero, we're going to destroy that board. I guess there should be one more thing that we do in that when we destroy a board, we just want to set the board HP back to B5 because if we have like three boards built and we destroy like board one out of three, we want to make sure that we set board two back to be the max HP, if that makes sense to you guys. So we want to set board HP back to be max HP. So very, very quickly, because I don't want to spend too much time on that. Now when we build a board, it should have five HP. Now if I left click one, two, three, four, five, you can see it destroys off of number five. I can build all three boards and you can see I can go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And you can see there that we can build and we can destroy and we're resetting the HP whenever we build or when we destroy. So that's how you can add HP to the boards. So I, I think this is a fairly simple system. I added a bit more complexity in my game um, you can make it so it's not instant when you build. You, we could make it so that we're checking over time to see if the player is holding the click while we're building. We could have it so that when the player releases, it stops building. While they're holding left click here on construct, we could interact with our animation blueprint and we could start running an animation. But I think those type of tools are better learned in other videos. I don't want to make this like a 40 minute video just going over like animation blueprint stuff. So I think I'll end the video there. I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, please let me know. But this is how personally I would handle preset locations on barricades. And just to let you know, we can redo this. Like we can put this anywhere. This is a system that we can reuse. I guess I should have said that before. Since this barricade actor is just like an actor, what we can do is we can slide this over. And I guess let me add like one piece of functionality for you guys. I actually do want to add one thing. Inside of our barricade, say when I go to put this on a second door, it's invisible, the boards and stuff. So I can't tell kind of where those boards were to line this up. So one thing we could do is we're actually going to make one new custom event and we're going to call it toggle visibility. And what I actually want to do with this toggle visibility is in the top right here, we're going to do something special or we're going to make this call in editor. And now with this set to call in editor, that means that we can call it not when our game is running, but when we're actually working inside of the editor. And that what I want to do is I want to take our three boards and I just want to set their visibilities and I just want to take each of them. And I'm just going to, I think we could do toggle visibility. There we go. And now what we want to do is we would just want to toggle the visibility of all three of them. So I'm just going to copy paste that. And there we go. So this means toggle visibility just means when they're visible, we set them to be not visible. And when they're not visible, we set them to be visible. So now with this, um, with this second barricade actor selected, so all I did is I took our first barricade actor and I just held alt and dragged that duplicates, or we could take this and drag it into the world. So this right here is a barricade actor. What I can do is I can toggle the visibility and you can see the boards pop up. And I can do is I can drag this in place to get it where I want it. 
that can figure out like exactly where I want the boards to be. And then all I have to do is I toggle visibility back off. And now in our game, I can go up to this new doorway and I can right click and build and I can left click and destroy. And it works just like it did before. And we just basically reuse that barricade actor somewhere else very quickly. And just remember, before you run the game, you want to toggle the visibility back to being off on those boards. So that's how we can do that. We, we can use that visibility, toggle it on, place it where we want it, remove it. And now you can put this wherever you want it. You can put it on windows, you can put it on doors. This is basically just how I handled it for my game. So I hope you guys learned something, and I'll see you guys in the next video.